Hi everyone, Sean Sinsmeister from ThoughtSpot here. As many employees have shifted to a work from home environment, and business and government communications have moved online, and now more businesses and services are thinking towards reopening readiness as more and more states and countries start to stagger opening and allow businesses and people um, back into society. Call centers must become more efficient to meet new customer behavior trends. So the data behind these communications enables us to measure the success or failure of the responses by both government and commercial support services. So we've created a new demo where we've loaded publicly available San Francisco 311 data from the last several years to help us understand what types of issues residents typically report and how to increase the efficiency of our responses. From the homepage, we get a quick view into the metrics we are following. So by following metrics, we can get regular updates so we don't miss anything important. Here we can see this is an example of how we're monitoring the number of cases as it pertains to street and sidewalk cleaning in the month of December of last year. Now let's take a quick look at our 311 overview pin board to get a glimpse of what's going on in the city toward the end of last year. At the top, here are our key metrics that we're currently following. These are the top four service request types by the number of cases. We scroll further down. We then have our geo maps that use latitude and longitude of each report to highlight the areas where graffiti and street and sidewalk cleaning cases are most prevalent. And if we scroll further down, at the bottom of our pin board, we have a couple of charts that are tracking cases from our top four categories. So we can get a quick feel both for how the number of reports and days it took to resolve cases evolved throughout last year. Residents report more cases of sidewalk and street cleaning, graffiti and encampments during the summer. Abandoned vehicle reports are pretty steady. So let's dive into the chart on the right using explore mode to see how well we're responding to reports. We saw that abandoned vehicle cases fairly steady both in the number of reported cases and the average duration of days to respond. On the other hand, if we take a look at encampments, these increase throughout the year, and the average duration required to address both cleaning and graffiti trended downward. So using Explore, we can actually easily switch out dimensions. For example, rather than looking at average duration by category, we can click on Source, under breakdowns and see the average duration by source. There has been much improvements by source over the past year. So rather than looking at multiple categories, let's use search this time to create insights focused solely on graffiti. To begin, we simply type average days duration. In this case, we wanna look at this yearly and we're gonna filter on graffiti. You can see how easy the search bar makes that to query. And here you can show ThoughtSpot shows us a line chart of average number of days required by year to address reported graffiti cases. Let's see a little bit more detail. So I'm gonna go here into settings, to my chart configuration. We're gonna turn on the date labels as well as the markers. So the last couple of years look great, but the spike in 2017 really starts to stand out. So here we wanna figure out why there was this spike. And so we can use a tool called Auto Analyze. It's really useful for analysts to help automate data discovery and perform key driver analysis to really understand the root cause behind this trend. So we'll start by selecting 2015 and then a peak here at 2017. We can then select the specific dimensions in which we are most interested in to help automate drill downs and get much more granular understanding of our key drivers. So what Spot IQ, which is our AI insights engine, is doing is it's going out and asking thousands of questions on our behalf to perform this key driver automatically for us. And here we can see how our AI engine automatically created a dashboard of results in just a few seconds. So we can see that the average duration increased from 27.7 to 65.2 to 136%. The what if visualizations on this page will tell us how this 136% might be different had other factors held steady. For example, 
Let's scroll down here to see some of our other insights. So here we can see there's a what if percentage change in average days duration by police district that shows us that an increase in the duration of days to resolution in the Mission Police District contributed greatly to the overall 136%. If the duration in the mission had not changed between 2015 and 2017, the overall increase would have been only about 88% rather than 136%. So that's still quite an increase, but the actual jump was almost another 50% on top of that. Let's look at a, another insight. Let me scroll back up. Here I think is one of the most telling changes. There's a much greater number of reports that came in via the mobile application in 2017 rather than 2015. So considering we had seen the number of graffiti reports begin to come back down in 2018, it's quite possible that there was some publicity or an advertising campaign that drove the spike in reports from mobile apps over this period. And what we can do so go ahead and pin this to our dashboard to build our story out. So you can see in a matter of minutes, we've been able to see how 311 reports trended in San Francisco, how well various departments within the city responded to specific reports, and even the key drivers behind the increase of reports for a specific activity over a defined period of time, all with the use of search and AI. And by monitoring meaningful metrics on pin boards and then drilling down into the specifics within search, we can track progress, or even lack thereof, at the highest levels, all the way down to the most granular details. Call center efficiency matters now more than ever, and this is a great example of how data-driven communications and decision-making um, can help make these call centers uh, more efficient as we think about reopening readiness and also helping to build resiliency for any future shocks. If you'd like to learn more, head over to ThoughtSpot.com or feel free to look me up on LinkedIn, Sean Zinsmeister, or on Twitter, at S. Zinsmeister. Happy to answer any questions and continue the conversation there. Thanks again for your time. I hope this was helpful.